put this in, a, in two contexts. One in the context of a broader metropolitan sort of system and another in the context of more local, local areas. Um, it's a matter of the scale on which you, you sort, of, sort of operate. If you look at clustering, which is really about linked industry specialisations and concentrations, uh, which may or may not be um, uh, geographically contiguous areas. Um, if you look at a broader scale, Melbourne obviously has a huge concentration, a cluster of logistics uh, related activities. Uh, Sydney has got a cluster in aggregate in terms of um, high level financial and business services, certain ones particularly in finance, insurance, those, those, those sorts of services. Uh, Melbourne has clusterings in automotive related uh, manufacturing and activities and so on. Um, now, where you've got these really big concentrations in terms of metropolitan or national scale clusters, uh, what you tend to do is to get often quite long distances of commuting from where people work in those clusters from where they live. If you go down to a local level, you can get clustering or spatial concentration of jobs in a particular economic activity, employment area, such as retailing or, or, or uh, various forms of education services or whatever. Um, uh, and, uh, but they may be quite small in aggregate, and there may be many of those spread across a metropolitan area. Now let me take one step aside as well. One of the big issues in planning is this notion that you want to maximise the job opportunities that individuals will have in terms of where they live over minimising the distance they might have to travel to get access to diversified uh, economic employment uh, 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 activities. And uh, planners have invented this sort of notion which I think is somewhat spurious because depending on how you measure it, you can get one extreme or another uh, in terms of looking at for defined areas of planning interest, you want to try to uh, implement policies, develop and implement policies that will lead to the greatest degree of self-containment. That is, people live and work within confined geographic areas. They may be quite large, but defined and confined and contiguous local geographic areas. Now, that's very difficult to achieve, but it's a, it's a nice objective because it has um, related issues in terms of uh, energy efficiency and all that sort of thing related to, to, to the movement and mobility of people. Um, so where does this sort of leave you all? It's a very, very difficult thing to work through. What we've seen over the last few years, in the work I've done with Bill Mitchell at Coffee in, in Newcastle, uh, we've created a new geography of Australia and Orem's incorporated all this in called Functional Economic Regions. And it's kind of interesting. These are, and you combine these in a similar sort of way, you aggregate up areas of employment concentration and where you are maximising the number of people who live locally and also work locally. So you build up uh, using a similar sort of approach, uh, um, uh, clustering uh, algorithms and so on. You develop these functional economic regions which are quite quite large in metropolitan areas. Melbourne, by the way, has six functional economic regions. And if you look at those functional economic regions, sure there's travel across them in terms of people where they live and where they work, but those functional economic regions have about 
to 80 percent of people who live there work within those regions as well. So we've, we've got, as our metropolitan areas become bigger and more diverse, and you get non-CBD centres growing and so on, and you do get the emergence of these, of these um, uh, functional economic regions. Now one of the problems is our transport systems. Operators, though, still, they're very good in terms of line ball movement of people from outer areas into inner areas, but um, the system is developed in terms of public transport uh, use uh, to get to work. It's predicated very much on the notion that everyone still wants to move to the inner city of work. And in fact, uh, the only two cities in Australia with more than 10% of their workforce jobs located in the central business district and around are Adelaide and Perth, and it's changing very rapidly in Perth. It's 20% in Adelaide, it's well under 10% in Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne now. So most of the jobs are out there, not in here. And when you look at diverse regions like the Melbourne North and West, there are so-called uh, areas of jobs deficiency, and but there is also a high degree in a fairly broad scale of aggregate self-containment but it's over quite large areas. Now this sort of work can start to give you some insights into these vexed issues uh, at various levels of scale, the regional scale and getting down to the local scale. Yeah, so uh, this is the broader sorts of context in which I guess you can place this type of work. Great, thank you both.